It was recently brought to our attention the complexity of long-term care in Portugal. You have many situations similar to this, where an elderly woman was found by her son covered in ants at a facility that was supposed to be caring for her. While local Portuguese people and aging retirees face different challenges when it comes to long-term care in Portugal, they could also seek similar solutions. What are these challenges? And how can you be sure that you're ready for your possible move to or retirement in Portugal? No exclusivo desta noite, um caso que pode ser parecido com outros, mas que nunca é tolerável. Trata-se da denúncia de um lar ilegal acusado de mal. Situations like we just showed you can happen. But first, it's really important for you to understand a few foundational things if you're interested in growing old here. First off, when we're talking about long-term care, we don't just mean disabled, home care, or a nursing home. It's more than a pill that you take just once a week. The spectrum is really large. The system falls largely onto the public sector, and the public sector is divided into four legs. These four legs are SNS, Social Security, NGOs, and families that make up the real bulk of long-term care in Portugal. Now, Portuguese people have access to all four of these. However, by and large, expats don't. Yes, NGOs and SNS, or national health care, will provide some care, but for the average expat, you've not paid into Social Security, so that rules out that leg, and you've likely moved away from family, so you no longer have that support network either. Now, if you're from North America, you'll likely think of classic long-term care solutions like assisted living facilities and gated communities. We're looking at you, the villages, but those don't really exist here in mass. What does exist here, according to Serenity, is long waits and a very basic approach to healthcare. This is something that the average Portuguese has to put up with, likely because of the cost of care in these private facilities. Not that all facilities are created equal as seen in the beginning. We'll get back to that and unpack the root cause of those incidents and how you can avoid it. But let's first consider some of these private care facilities and their costs. Just recently, Serenity had a consultation with a British couple about pricing out their LTC options in the famed Algarve, where English is widely spoken and where plenty of the 50,000 plus Brits living in Portugal reside. Serenity found the same thing this article claims. The UK's average price for residential care is 2,400 pounds and specialist nursing care is around 3,300 pounds. While in Portugal, the range for top facilities are 2,200 pounds to 4,400 pounds per month. And there's something really important to note and that you should check out and look into, and that is that not all countries have arrangements for overseas care abroad. The UK government does not have any reciprocal arrangements to cover overseas residential care for Brits living abroad. So it's not surprising that a study that was recently published found that Portugal was one of the 27 EU member states with the highest share of direct out-of-pocket funding for LTC. In 2019, Portugal's public spending on LTC was 0.4% of GDP, which is significantly lower than the EU 27 average of 1.7%. So proportionately, not as much tax money is going to fund LTC, and it's having to come out of the pockets of individuals in need of care for themselves or their families. Speaking of family, Portugal is also one of the highest when it comes to the EU27 members with care provided by informal carers. So clearly the Portuguese people are relying on families, but will you have that network here? Why am I telling you all of this? Because if you want to move here at an advanced age or you hope to live here the rest of your life, you need to have a plan in place as you enter a system that's already stressed. Fortunately, there are solutions. So it's not just a matter of throwing money at the problem either, although that might help significantly. Because of the lack of supply, unlicensed facilities have popped up all over the place. Fortunately, the government is already recognizing this problem. 2023 saw 118 nursing homes in Portugal closed. 
So while there seems to be a real crackdown on this, Rita from Serenity assured me that one can first and foremost avoid using illegal or unlicensed facilities by simply requesting to see their license. Now when it comes to finding good facilities, you could use a service like Serenity to help you identify what might be right for you, or there are also a few websites that we've seen that at least provide straightforward information about LTC facilities up and down the country. We've not vetted these sites, but we will put them in the description section below so you can do your own research. All right, so who really knows what the landscape is gonna look like when you need it? Well, we're not 100% sure, but what we can say, there are people that are investing into LTC schemes. And Serenity has even rolled out a solution as they're always innovating to meet their clients' needs. Let's talk to the CEO now. Well, it's relatively simple. Portugal lacks solutions when it comes to long-term care. And when it comes to expatriates that live here not so long, that did not contribute to social, to social security, and would love to see a different level of services, those are practically lacking. What we came up with is an interim solution. I have to mention that this, this is an interim solution to provide answers as quickly as possible. Serenity, per its action, this is our DNA, uh, is a company that finds the most appropriate solutions to one's clinical needs. So we took this virtue of ours, and we combined it with a temporary solution of a financial tool that would allow our client to deposit, to put aside money that would be used in specific cases of clinical need. I think that the closest thing that uh, you have in the States is either a fiduciary account in a way or health savings account as well. This is more or less the same structure. People would place money that is designated only for a certain list of purposes and those only, all health related, and it would allow us through a kind of a, almost a POA, but through a very strictly written contract to use those funds in order to pay for specific services. If somebody now is hospitalized, we will know about it one, two days up front, arrange for the solution and will be able to pay for it and not be stuck waiting for somebody to be released from the hospital to go to the bank to do a transfer or whatever. The same would happen if somebody is really debilitated, lost the ability to communicate to the bank or whatever and needs to deposit no money for uh, for a surgery, for a treatment, because what we really want to do is really establish a true fund that would allow people uh, to have the money well managed, even maybe bearing some, I don't know what, interests uh, with time. Uh, we're working on that. This is a solution that uh, is not uh, easy to create in Portugal. People look at us like, where did you guys come from? Like, <laughs> why? why do you need this? And ultimately, that's what we all want. We want our last few years to be good, if not great. So what do you do now? Well, this video is not a sponsored video, but we do have to say that whenever we have any questions about the healthcare system in Portugal, Serenity is usually one of our first calls. They've been really valuable to us by providing us relevant information as they have decades of industry experience you also need to consider the four legs of the system and which one will actually apply to you and benefit you. And of course, financially plan to make sure you've got enough money to afford the facility you might need, which isn't any different than what you should do if you're thinking about staying in your home country. If you're already at the stage of seriously considering a long-term care facility, either for yourself or a family member, Ask about their license to make sure you don't end up as one of the unfortunate, sad stories reported about. So if you're new to the channel, we highly recommend that you check out this video here on emergency situations here in Portugal, or if you need a little explanation on how the public and private care systems work here in the country, check out this video right here. Until next time, let's get moving. Bye.